Hi there, my name is Marley and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm starting a new blog and it is actually an annual one that I've done on my channel every year since I've started and that is where I read Indigo's best books of the year. I will link my previous year's videos down below if you want to watch those but I really enjoy doing this. If you don't know, Indigo slash chapters is like Canada's number one bookstore and they put out a list of their best books of the year every year. I like to do this to just catch up on some of the most popular books from the year that I didn't get to. How I normally do it is I look at the list and I pick five books that interest me. So I'm not necessarily reading their top five, but I'm looking at their top 20 or top 50 and choosing five that interest me. And this has led to me reading some really, really great books and favorite books such as The Vanishing Half and Anxious People, but it has also led to me reading some really disappointing books. <laughs> In the past, I've just kind of told you what books I'm gonna read, but I think this time I'm gonna take you through looking at the list, I'm gonna screen record, and then we're gonna pick out the books together. I'm filming this a little bit in advance, so this will give me time to get my hands on all these books and stuff. So let's screen record. All right, so I believe we are recording here. So our best books of the year. So first of all, we have Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. So she's the author of Little Fires Everywhere, which I like. I didn't love, but I liked it. So this is definitely going to be a contender. I think I will read this one, but let's just see what it's about here. I assume it's another like literary fiction. A deeply suspenseful and heartrending novel about the unbreakable love between a mother and child in a society consumed by fear. Okay, so probably similar themes as Little Fires Everywhere dealing with the mother-daughter relationships. So I think that can definitely be one of them. Then we have one called Namuat We Are All One by Chief Robert Joseph. I think I'm gonna stay away from nonfiction for the most part here. Then we have Babel by R.F. Kwan. I have heard a lot of people reading this lately, but I personally wasn't super interested in reading it. So, you know, it's noted, but I don't think I'm gonna do this one. Looking for Jane by Heather Marshall. It's giving historical fiction, which is not really my thing. Book Lovers, obviously I have already read and loved. Scars and Stars is poetry, no. The Marriage Portrait, never heard of her. Okay, We Spread by Ian Reid. I've read Ian Reid's book, I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I loved that book. So I think I'm definitely interested in reading this one. I assume it's another thriller or horror book. Actually, I think I have heard Gabby Reid's talk about it and really like it. I I think it has to do with like dementia or something. At once compassionate and uncanny, told in spare hypnotic prose, Ian Reid's genre-defying third novel explores questions of conformity, art, productivity, relationships, and what ultimately it means to grow old. Yeah, so it's about getting, getting old. Okay, so I think we have two books so far. Freezing Order, never heard of this one, not interested. Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. Okay, this is a thriller I've heard a lot about. Jennifer Hillier is an author I've heard a lot about, even from my sister who doesn't read a ton. So I think I'm definitely gonna put this on the list. This seems like a fun thriller. Not sure I really know what it's about though. Paris Peralta is suspected of killing her celebrity husband and her long hidden past now threatens to destroy her future. Okay, just a typical thriller. But yeah, definitely into that. So they're just showing their top 10 and then you can go to more of their best books by genre, which I haven't seen them do before. But let's not do historical fiction, but let's look for maybe another, no, we already have a thriller. Maybe let's look at fantasy so we can have a fantasy pick. I know I said no to Babel, but is there another one we can do? Okay, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is one that I'm more intrigued by and I've seen people read. I think give it a little bit of mixed feelings. A captivating and romantic debut epic fantasy inspired by the legend of the Chinese Moon Goddess in which a young woman's quest to free her mother pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm. Okay. I'll do this one. So that's four books we're at right now. So maybe let's pick a romance because we don't have a romance. So we'll look at that next. Okay, book lovers, no. Love on the Brain. Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. Okay, I'm gonna do this one because I read The Love Hypothesis at the beginning of the year and I loved it. And I know this has definitely been having mixed reviews, but I think we have to do this one. Basically, we have a literary fiction. We had a like horror genre bending. We had a thriller, we have a fantasy, and we have a romance very balanced, a very balanced list. So these are gonna be the five books that I read in this vlog, some of the best books of the year apparently, and let's see if I like them as well.
Hey guys, it's been a minute since I filmed that intro, but now I have started this vlog. As you can see, I have begun reading Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng, and I'm actually at the 45% mark. This is a book I really did not know much about going into it. As you saw from the intro, I kind of didn't know how to describe it because I have not heard people talk about it on booktube, which is where I hear most of my recommendations. So I really was going into this pretty blind, but now, I get it. Now I know what it's about. And I see what Goodreads meant by dystopian. It is a dystopian book, but it reads very much like literary fiction. For example, there are no quotation marks. So just a little warning for people out there if you're considering reading it, because I know some people hate the style of, ha of having no quotation marks, similar to Miss Sally Rooney, but I don't mind it. So that's not a huge deal breaker for me, but putting that out there. We're following our main character named Bird, or his real name's Noah, but he prefers to go by Bird. He is this young boy, I think he's around 10, I'm not I'm not 100% sure his age, but he is a Chinese American boy. So his mother was Chinese and his dad is white. We're following his life in this kind of dystopian world where this organization called PACT has taken over. And I believe what that stands for is protecting American culture and tradition. But basically, PACT is all about protecting the American like traditions and values and culture, whatever. And it's very against any sort of cultures from other eras of the world. Particularly, it's focusing on the Asian countries, which I believe is because Celeste Ng herself is an Asian American. So it's really focusing on sort of racism towards Asian people. Obviously, PACT is a pretty racist organization that, yeah, basically it doesn't allow any sort of displays of any sort of like cultures that aren't considered American. But Bird, he's a kid growing up in this world, so he doesn't really understand and he's sort of being brainwashed by PACT. And his mother ends up leaving him when he's young and we end up finding out that she's sort of like the ringleader for this rebellious group that is going against PACT. So following a lot of kind of traditional dystopian tropes and trends, and his mother was a poet, so she had this quote or like this poem called Our Missing Hearts and it is sort of used as a calling card for this group and I believe it represents how a lot of children are being taken away from their parents which is like their missing hearts like their kids are being taken away another example is packed is burning and getting rid of all of these library books so that people are not able to kind of like educate themselves and know what's going on or know about like history and stuff like that like they are very much controlling everything that people know and trying to brainwash blah 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 typical kind of dystopian but yeah it's written very beautifully like it was pretty quick for me to get through part one there's three parts in the book and I saw that the point of view is gonna switch so we've been following Bird the young boy and now it looks like we're going to be following his mother for part two so we'll see how it goes like I have been somewhat liking the first part but with this point of view shift we'll see if it gets better or maybe it'll get worse I'm just kind of feeling so so about it because it's very like typical dystopian so I don't really feel like it's doing anything super unique so maybe that's why I haven't heard too many people talk about this book but it's going okay the writing is good So I finished reading Our Missing Hearts today. Unfortunately, I do feel like the second half was not as good as the first part. As I said, we did get into Bird's mother's point of view and that allowed us to really explore what happened to lead to PACT being implemented. There was this thing called the crisis, which is what led to this sort of dystopian world. It's where, you know, the world got really bad financially and politically and blah 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 like we just see how the world was going to shambles and then we see it's particularly what bird's mom was going through how there became this certain like prejudice against china and anyone who looked like they could be from china but it wasn't particularly like interesting and then we did have a third part at the end but it was pretty quick and kind of just 
wrapped everything up and I do feel like there was just really beautiful writing some really beautiful themes that were explored but I do think the idea was just way better than the execution I think at this point we've seen so many dystopian stories and they all kind of have the same kind of thing going on and this one didn't particularly do anything super unique again Celeste Ng writes very beautifully but I don't think the characters were particularly stand out by any means and I just think that this could have been done better and I feel like there's a reason I really don't hear anyone talking about this book. For some reason Indigo put it as its number one book. I don't know how they choose that if it's based on sales or something else or if Heather the CEO just picks it. I don't know but I don't think anyone that I have on Goodreads even read this book. I think I was the only one and honestly I'm not really going to recommend it and so that means the last two Celeste Ng books I've read I have been sort of disappointed by so we'll have to see. I'm kind of interested in reading her one other book I haven't read yet but I don't know if I'm super like intrigued to keep reading her books. So hopefully we got the worst one out of the way i am still giving it a three star rating which isn't terrible because you know what there were still some beautiful moments i still you know i like the message she was trying to go for but it just didn't it just didn't deliver you know on i think what she wanted so now i am excited to get into the next book i think i'm gonna read things we do in the dark next because i just really want to enjoy the next one and i have i have a good feeling about this one halfway through things we do in the dark and it's pretty good it's not amazing but it is interesting so we're following a main character like a 30 something year old woman and she's married to this famous actor who is quite a bit older than her but she wakes up one day covered in his blood he's been murdered and she's holding the murder weapon but she doesn't really remember what happened and so of course when people walk in they assume that she is the killer so she is getting like put on trial for this murder and she seems to have this mysterious past that she keeps alluding to which is very common in thrillers and similar to the last book we also have a new point of view that then starts and maybe i won't get into details about what that point of view is but we start to piece together more of her past and learn a lot more about her we actually learned quite a bit more about it than i was expecting to i thought that would be like a longer mystery to figure out what's happening but i'm pretty sure i know what's going on and kind of like what it's leading to so i'm wondering what the twist is going to be because it's kind of obvious to me what's going on so i'm definitely interested to see if there's any like surprises for the second half but it is very dark as you can imagine she ran away from her past made a new name made a new identity and all that stuff so she has a pretty dark past that she is running away from there is a podcast element so if you like reading thrillers with podcasts you'll probably like this there's definitely a lot of things reminding me of the last housewife with sort of the dark themes and abuse against women and then also like the podcast. Also some of this book takes place in Toronto which is where I live so I've been liking that and just sort of recognizing a lot of the references. Apparently this author is from Toronto as well so that's why I think a lot of her books take place there. Our main character is also Filipino or like half Filipino half white which the author is as well and I'm enjoying the writing and everything it's kind of just like a typical enjoyable thriller and I'm curious to see if there will be anything that makes it really unique or really good in the second half work holiday party today this is the look another Christmas event all right hey guys Sorry I look a mess. I'm very tired on a Sunday after having some busy plans which you guys saw had some Christmas events. Did manage to finish Things We Do in the Dark yesterday before our Christmas get together and it was pretty good. I feel like it just goes in some crazy directions you wouldn't expect from you know the initial premise and I decided to give it four stars but I was considering giving it even higher but I don't know if I can just because of what I alluded to before where I don't feel like the twists were ever shocking. There were definitely reveals throughout and very like interesting ones that kept me very engaged 
but it was never like a shock it was always like there were some hints so you kind of knew what was going on at all times i felt anyways but it got very dark there definitely were some times i felt like i was reading a little life again those who have read the book you might know what i mean by that just where so many bad things are just always happening to the main character however like it wasn't as bad as that was but yeah i felt like the characters were developed really well i thought the plot was really well done and as i mentioned i did really like a lot of those toronto and just like canadian references and overall i do just think this book was really well done so that's why i gave it four stars but i think i just i feel like i can't give a thriller a five unless it's like super shocking like blowing my mind kind of thing but yeah definitely a great book would recommend today i just want to do some things around the house but otherwise i want to start the next book i'm gonna do we spread by ian reed i think another kind of thrillery book to hopefully get through it quick because i feel like i'm a little behind in my reading plans this month so we'll see you when i've started that <music> halfway through we spread this is going to be a very very quick read for those who have read i'm thinking of ending things it's pretty similar in how quick it is to read how short the chapters are it's very much like a stream of consciousness sort of narration it's it's a very unique kind of narration which is really easy to read but also can be a little bit like Using. So our main character is an older woman. She has been living alone for a while as her partner passed away and she's just starting to experience some signs of, you know, aging. It's taking a toll on her mentally and also physically and she ends up having this big fall and so she gets put into this like long-term uh, senior home kind of thing that had been set up for her and we're just kind of seeing her adjust to this new environment there's actually only four residents that are living there and then like two people that are taking care of them so it's sort of this like smaller community rather than like a huge old age home and she's an artist her old uh, partner was an artist and there's just kind of some ominous vibes going on she's not really a very reliable narrator because she is older and i get the vibe that she's having maybe like dementia or alzheimer's that's kind of what i've heard about the book is that i think that's what our main character is experiencing but there's also just some other like sketchy things going on i i don't really trust the woman who is running this place there's just little things that are feeling off about her but then i don't know if it's just our main character being unreliable or if this woman is actually going to be sketchy and that there's actually going to be something sinister going on so it's pretty interesting i've only been reading you know for not that long i'm already halfway so i might just finish it today i feel like it's one of those books similar to i'm thinking of anything where it's like hard to really say much about it until i get to the end and i can fully know what's going on and what kind of like the twist is going to be but yeah it's going well so far so i have finished we spread and i think i'm going to give it like a 3.5 star rating i do think ian reed is very talented i think his books are just so interesting and unique that i would recommend them however i don't know i just think there was so much more going on and i'm thinking of any things and like cool things to interpret and this book does leave some things up for interpretation a little bit too but i kind of wish there was more and like more at the end but it is just very sad, heartbreaking. It deals with a lot of interesting topics like grief, aging. Like it's, it, it is scary. It is horrifying to think of growing old and being alone and losing yourself to illnesses and things. Like it's really upsetting. It's a really upsetting concept. And I feel like it's not something I like think about a lot. So it's not necessarily like one of my fears, I guess. But for people who are sensitive to that and maybe actually are older and already seeing signs of ex like aging or if someone you've known recently has gone through that, like this could be maybe more impactful for you. I did really enjoy reading it and everything, but yeah, I think it's just gonna be a 3.5 star, but I'm really interested to read his other book, Faux. I think that's the only other book I haven't read by him, 
but yeah he definitely deals with some interesting dark stuff in his books and i do like the way he writes and how it's just different from a lot of other books out there so yeah we are now more than halfway through this reading vlog so far it is a little bit of a mixed bag we had a three star a 3.5 and a four star so will we have a five star we'll have to see i think i'm gonna read daughter of the moon goddess next oh my tree just went on so diving into a fantasy book so i'm very interested to read that but i have like a million things i need to do tonight so will i start it today we'll see we'll see guys it has been a minute but i have finally reached the halfway point of daughter of the moon goddess by su lin tan this is definitely a slow one for me i'm kind of scared it's ruining my reading month a little bit but immediately i started the book and i was like oh no this writing is not gonna be great it's very flowery and i'm not saying i always hate flowery writing like purple prose or whatever it's called but in this one it was just like oh i'm bored and i really am bored for a lot of it you know i was reading it on the subway on my way to work and normally i'm fine to read on the subway but I was like falling asleep when I was reading this one. Like it just was not keeping me awake. When I'm reading it, you know, now or whenever, I just find myself like not paying attention. Like my thoughts are just drifting off and then I have to like reread what I just read because I have no idea what happened. And it's kind of annoying because when I read, I like to totally get sucked into the story and like distract from my life. Like that's why we read, right? To like escape. And this one is just not pulling me in enough unfortunately but what it's about uh, i think i said in the beginning is that it's based on chinese mythology and that's pretty much the only reason i am glad that i'm reading this is just to like learn a little bit more about chinese mythology because i never have before i of course have read a little bit about greek roman and egyptian mythology anything that like rick riordan has written but yeah so it's based on their myth of the moon goddess but essentially we have our main character xing yin and she is daughter of the moon goddess yeah and basically what the myth is with the moon goddess is that there was this woman and she was you know in a relationship with this man well actually i don't know how much the author changed it from the mythology but this is what i'm getting from the book basically the husband had earned this immortal elixir because he did something like this heroic act but then xing yin's mother actually drinks the elixir and takes it for herself to be immortal we find out it's because she was trying to protect herself and xing yin but because she like stole this elixir she is punished for it so she is trapped in this kingdom or wherever she is and she's not allowed to leave and xing yin is there with her her mother is not supposed to have given birth to her like she's kind of forbidden from being alive like the mom would get in trouble if the celestial empire found out so the catalyst of the story is that the celestial empress visits where the moon goddess is and she's kind of catching on to the fact that the moon goddess is hiding something which is her daughter xin yin so xin yin in a typical kind of fashion has to go on the run and leave her mom leave her home and just sort of fend for herself to protect herself because the celestial empire was gonna like come after her so she's on her own she has this goal that she wants to eventually save her mother from this imprisonment to do that she ends up working as a maid for like royalty or whatever like any job she can get oh and so her and her mom are immortal and like immortals have powers but i would say the book is not really great at exploring like what kind of powers they have or really delving into that as i said this writing super like flowery and stuff but i wouldn't say it's like particularly great like things are just moving along so quickly that it's almost like i don't even get to like catch a breath like we're moving along so quick that i'm not even able to like enjoy each of moment and fully like grasp what's going on i'll get into an example but basically xing yin is like crying over you know people treating her badly and of course this man slash boy i i don't know their ages but he comes across her and they're bonding and he like is super impressed with her or whatever and of course we find out he's like the crowned prince of 
the emperor empire or whatever so of course the prince like has a thing for her and ends up helping her get into this competition that is to be his companion and so normally it'd be only like noble or like royalty that could do that but he's like i want her to be my companion so she enters in this like these like trials so i'm like okay this is gonna be like a fun little like competition book you know like i love those they're very popular in like fantasy and dystopian books and then all of a sudden the competition's happening and all of a sudden it's over in like two pages like she has four different trials and they just go through them so freaking quick that i'm like what is going like this could be a whole book in itself like we're just going through the plot so quick that it's kind of weird like it's it's fast paced things are happening but i don't care enough about it I don't care enough about our main character. She's very like Mary Sue, chosen one, not like other girls, that kind of vibe. Yeah, the prince loves her. You can imagine she becomes his companion and then she just immediately is amazing at archery and she just like immediately is like this chosen one, amazing warrior. <laughs> Anyways, like th the plot goes on from there. It's sort of this forbidden love story with her and the prince. I'll say there's another love interest that's kind of come in that I'm more interested in. You know me, I always like the other guy like the underdog in the love triangle and basically she's just trying to do whatever she can to like impress the empire and impress all the higher up so that she can win their favor to try and get her mom's freedom but yeah i essentially told you what i thought of it what the plot is and i really just kind of want to get this over with i'm afraid it's kind of putting me into a reading slump but i'm going to be traveling this weekend i have to go on a subway train and a bus so i'm hoping that will just kind of like force me to sit there and read for a few hours and hopefully get through this and then hopefully love on the brain will not take too long as a romance because I have a certain day I want to upload this and now it's we're cutting it a little close here. I kind of wish I chose a different fantasy book to read. Bro, not me like hitting record accidentally and then I hit to stop recording when I thought I hit recording so then I just like did an update that wasn't recording okay I finished daughter of the moon goddess let me just say what I just said again basically I enjoyed the second half definitely more than the first half I feel like we actually were seeing scenes play out for a longer amount of time we weren't just sort of like skipping through Xing Yin <laughs> <laughs> Xing Yin's life. We actually were staying with some of these scenes for like multiple chapters and like experiencing them with her and they were interesting and action packed and stuff like that. So I actually did like the second half better. I also grew to like Xing Yin's relationship with the prince, uh, Li Wei, I think his name was. I grew to like their relationship more. I liked seeing the angst between them and pining and stuff like that in the second half. There were some twists, there were some dragons, which was cool. I haven't read too many books with dragons but i liked these ones and yeah just basically it was a better time in the second half so i feel like maybe the author just really wanted to get to this stuff and so the first half she just kind of was like getting through it because she had to you know set everything up that being said i think i'm gonna give it a three star so kind of average just because i didn't love a lot of it like the first half but i do feel like it was a pretty solid read still probably a better match for like other types of readers than for me i feel like there was so much focus on like the archery and more like the battle was more like combat like hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff or archery rather than like magical stuff there wasn't like a ton of magic and then apparently i'm pretty sure this is a duology so i feel like things wrapped up really really nicely in this first book i'm kind of surprised there's gonna be another one however i guess i will read it i can see a little bit of what what could lead to a sequel so i'll probably read that whenever but i do feel like you know this was a solid story just all wrapped up together so yeah i finally finished it now one more book can i read it in a day because <laughs> i want to upload this on tuesday and it's sunday night so we'll see so yeah definitely not my favorite book of the vlog but I feel like I'm still happy that I read it because it is pretty different from a lot of the books that I read. This would definitely be a good fit for people who like reading mythology books, maybe who like Song of Achilles and stuff like that, like Madeline Miller's books. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey readers, it's pretty early in the morning on Tuesday, the day I wanted to upload this, so you were probably not seeing this Tuesday. I got to about the halfway point of Love on the Bl Love on the Brain last night by Allie Hazelwood. And honestly, at first it was a little bit rough. I was like, oh no. There is definitely a lot of cringe. Miss Allie Hazelwood definitely adds some cringe into her books, but I feel like the last 25% I read was not as bad and I was definitely enjoying it quite a bit more but there were just some things in the first little bit I wasn't loving so if you don't know this is following our main character B who is a neuroscientist as you know Allie Hazelwood writes books about women in STEM so that's great but I was feeling like in the first part it was focusing a lot on her job stuff and the science and everything which is good but it was just like very heavy and like i was just getting personally annoyed with what was going on like you were supposed to like things were kind of not working out for b at the beginning and things were very frustrating and yeah as a reader it's just really frustrating to read like she starts working on this new project and things are just not being done it seems like someone's like almost gatekeeping her and trying to ruin her project kind of thing and the partner that she has on this new project is levi that's our main love interest and so it seems like he is the one that's kind of working against her that was just really bothering me and i was like i don't know how this relationship can be redeemed there were some really not great things going on between them and they had a history of knowing each other and kind of working together or going to school together in the past so in the past he did some things and said some things that made her think that he hated her and so in turn she hates him back so that's the obvious enemies to lovers kind of thing so once we kind of got past that and we finally got past the kind of miscommunication there's still a lot of miscommunication going on like levi thinks that she's married for a while she thought he was married like there's definitely some things standing in their way but they have started to actually like form a friendship and like they're having cute moments together which i am liking and of course everyone always talks about the fact that ali hazelwood writes her men to be like so huge and the women to be like so tiny and it is kind of funny just to read that i think she loves to come up with every single pun and every single comparison she can to show how big levi is like she even compared him to like a house that he looked like a victorian home like how can a person look like a house and and why would you want them to quite frankly like it's just kind of funny kind of very ridiculous and over the top for sure with how she describes how huge he is i'm liking some side characters i'll say that yeah there's definitely still some good stuff going on in the book now but i'm feeling like i won't like it as much as the love hypothesis i think especially because it is so similar but i don't think it's a direct copy and paste like I think she's sticking with some same tropes but it's not bothering me too much that i feel like i'm reading the exact same book maybe because it's been a year in between me reading them but i do think it might be like the least good version of the two but we'll have to see I'm gonna try and read the second half today a bit behind in my reading schedule but you know what it's okay it will be okay hey friends so i officially finished love on the brain i literally just binged the second half today which showed how much i enjoyed it and how much i wanted to you know wrap up this vlog but i really liked it and i'm gonna give it four stars i think it was really fun there was some stuff that happened at the end that kind of surprised me i don't really want to spoil but it was almost like thrillery like there were some reveals there was some action i can't remember if i said it in my first update but there actually is a trope i don't normally love which is the secret pen pal trope where like they talk online and they don't realize who they're talking to and normally i don't like that but i actually didn't mind it in this book i feel like a lot of stuff about this book just really worked for me the second half obviously had some smutty scenes and i will admit those weren't all particularly my favorite by any means but that's why you know it didn't get a perfect five star rating but i still did quite like it and so i would i would recommend this for romance lovers out there for people who liked the love hypothesis i think it was a good time and so ending this vlog we had two four star books we had one 3.5 and then two three stars so not the best results you could get but also not the worst i'm still curious like who is choosing indigo's best books i really don't know where this list is coming from it's almost like the goodreads best books too it's like 
how are they making these lists yeah i'm happy to have read most of these books even if i didn't love them all i'm still kind of glad to get them off my list and have experienced them because these all were quite popular books so leave me a comment down below about any of these books maybe let me know what you thought the best book of the year was what you think should be on the list and thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far it really means a lot i hope you guys have a great holiday season and i'll see you next week in my videos my last videos of the year bye